Have you ever heard that song from 1988, The Living Years by Mike and the Mechanics? Great song. We used to love it. And the first four lines of that song were, Every generation blames the one before, and all of their frustrations come beating on your door. And, boy, you think about that, and, you know, I think in the 1930s, my grandfather, and that, that was kind of the beginning of big band music, and then my dad was 1950s, mom and dad was Elvis, and then I was 1970s, Led Zeppelin, and then my daughter was 1990s, rap and hip hop. I'm like, what is that? And then her son, 2010, is, I don't even know what they listen to. <laughs> I'm, I'm just totally out of the loop on what the new music is, so I need to study. Anything before 1990, I'm really good at music trivia, but, but anyway, and that's, we all kind of get stuck in our own generation. I mean, I'm still in the 80s, you know. See, I got Snoopy and five Woodstocks. You know, I mean, I'm, and I think that's a lot of it is we, this clash between baby boomers and millennials that's been going on, you know, uh, you know, now millennials are doing the old okay boomer, right? And look, you know, yeah, I'm a baby boomer. I'm 58. I was born in 63, graduated high school in 81. And, um, yeah, we make fun of millennials. I mean, we go, oh, they're like the Kardashians. What's that about? And they eat kale. Okay, after I turn 50, I eat kale. It's actually pretty good. Especially those little uh, kind bars with the pineapple and kale, but I haven't been able to find them for over a year. And weed eater spools. Why are they so hard to find with the pandemic? Anyway, so the each generation kind of does blame the generation before. Now, Boomers and Millennials are not back-to-back -back Generation X is in between them. Millennials are, are Generation Y. But I'm, I've been thinking about it, and why is this? And I'm going to tell you a story, and I think it's really going to, this is really going to explain to you why Millennials have a bit of a bitterness toward baby boomers. I can't blame, blame them, but we really can't control it because, you know, you, you can go out and you can vote and do whatever, but most of what happens is circumstantial. We, we're, we're all kind of thrown into a river and we can't really control much about what goes on in the world, to be honest with you. But, so back in the 1980s, I went to college. I graduated high school in 81. I went to college. I went to UVA my first year. Then I went graduated from Christopher Newport University. And I, I was working in restaurants to pay for my college, have extra money. And it was so fun. I mean, you know, I, I'm going to be that guy. Oh, the 80s, they were incredible. But I, one day, one of my next door neighbors, it was a Friday night, and he comes home with this pretty girlfriend, and they're both in their early 20s. And I said, what are you doing tonight? You going out for a big date? And they said, we can't, we can't afford it. So we got the old next Netflix tape, and we're going to, you know, this is a G-rated channel, so no Netflix jokes. But, so, they, they said, yeah, that's what we pretty much do every Friday, Saturday night. We rent movies, and we get some food, and even fast food's expensive. And I said, well, why can't you go out? I said, well, it'd be like $200 to go on a real date for dinner and dancing and drinks. And I'm like, $200? And, and these two are not lazy. You know, you say, well, are, are millennials lazy and unmotivated? No, they both go to college, good jobs, work hard. Not lazy at all. But 200 bucks, you know, you can't, they just can't, you know, because the salaries haven't increased that much since the 80s. That it, and that's really what is, has killed the millennials versus when we were growing up. Inflation. It all comes down to inflation. Money, the value is exponential. It's just gone way down. So I started to regale them. I love that word, regale. With some stories about when I was in school, being a waiter, and a, first a busboy, then a waiter, then a bartender. No, a busboy, then a bartender, then a waiter. Oh, I did everything in restaurants. But, and they were just like, they got wide-eyed. Oh my gosh, it sounded like some Nirvana, some paradise. And I said, the 80s were. That really was. It was really that much fun. And so... I said, we, I would work in a restaurant, and typically as a waiter, I would make 50 bucks on a weekday night, on a Monday or Tuesday, and $75 on a Friday or Saturday, sometimes 100 But those are rough estimates, but it's pretty steady. And I'd work, you know, five nights a week. And of course, you know, I had all the energy back then. You'd have to sleep that much. You could go to college, take your 16 credit hours or 18 or whatever it was, work, get up, date. You still had energy. You never got tired. You know, I didn't sleep in the eighties. So, and you would your money. You would fill your gas tank up, and I had uh, like a Toyota, so a Toyota truck and a Toyota Corolla. 
So it cost nothing. Like gas was, I don't know, 33 cents or something. <laughs> and you get, so you just, it was a few bucks. You filled up your gas tank. So that was out of the way. That didn't cost you anything. Then you went out to eat. I bought Rolling Stones tickets for $9.95 at the Hampton Coliseum. The Mothership, as you music fans know. $9.95. And I remember us whining and complaining because there was like a service fee that Ticketmaster gave of like $1.25. And we were outraged. I mean, now you can't go to Rolling Stones concert for under, what, $125? bucks. i do not know what it is now. So, but sal so that's 10 times more. But salaries haven't increased 10 times more. See what I'm saying about that inflation being exponential. And... You would go out for drinks, and a lot of places had, uh, I don't drink anymore, I quit drinking in 94, but you would, 90, 1994, that was it, clean and sober. But, uh, I want to turn 31, but um, it was a wise, <laughs> wise decision. But you go out for drinks, a lot of places had what they call two for one, like uh, Steak and Ale, Bennigan's, all those places. So you go in there, and like in the afternoons it was happy hour. So, I mean, you, it, the drinks didn't cost that much. A lot of places had like quarter beers. I mean, those were common everywhere you went. Ladies, a lot of times, were free because they wanted to get the women to go to the bars to even it out because this is a military area, so there tend to be a lot more guys. So they usually ladies didn't even pay. Um, the dinners, you go to like a nice seafood buffet, nine ninety five, just like a Rolling Stones ticket. You know, now now Captain George's seafood buffet, which is still great, but it's like thirty. I mean, so I mean everything was so cheap. So you go out. And I, I remember I'd work, I'd, I'd take, I, and we always used cash, we hardly ever used credit cards. And, because back then it was just when you, credit cards, ATMs are kind of new. So we just always had cash. And, and I remember you'd go out, you'd have that big wad of cash in your pocket, you, you always wanted ones and fives. And I'd, I'd make 75 bucks on a Friday night, go out and have a great time with a pretty girl, wake up the next morning, oh, my head hurts, look at my pocket, and there was 20 bucks. And I spent, I still had 20 bucks left over after I did everything that night. Drinking, dancing, eating gas. It was crazy. And I told that couple next door and their eyes just got wide. Oh my gosh. It was paradise. And you had malls, you know. Malls were new. There were malls everywhere. 7-Elevens on every corner. There was a mall everywhere. There were so many malls and they were nice malls too. And you go, and that's, malls were a second home. You leave. You went to the mall every day after school. You just went there. Oh, man. It's just like, you know, the movies, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. You really did that. It was so fun. And the malls were so clean and new then. Yeah, 7-Elevens. You, you always were stopping at 7-Eleven. Money went so far. Now, if you went to 7-Eleven, you'd be spending half your salary. But, you know, you get the Slurpees and the Slim Jims and the Big Gulps and everything. And at 2 in the morning, the 7-Eleven burritos and the hearty steak biscuits. We ate terribly, too. You know, now I'm eating a lot healthier than that. You know, I've lost a lot of muscle and weight. But, um, you know, you have to eat better when you get older. But, you know, I tell them this story and they're like, you know, we couldn't do that. It would cost us literally hundreds of dollars to do it. So it's, that's why millennials, really, there is kind of a bitterness about it. And they blame us. But there's nothing. We didn't really do anything. It just kind of happened that way, this inflation. I don't know why it's happened that way. I think a lot of it is just the world caught up with us. China got stronger india got stronger and so that money from america kind of got funneled elsewhere i'm not going to talk politics or anything but you know i i think that's just what it was the world the rest of the world caught up with us back then it was just america was so powerful and and that inflation just killed us so we didn't really do it you know I, you know i feel bad for millennials but are millennials lazy and unmotivated no i think they're really hard work and i watched jeopardy and we wheel of fortune jeopardy and the the 30 year olds and they're, they're pretty impressive. So I think we're pretty good hands. They're much better on computers than we are. And they're, they're much more open-minded than we were, too, I think. I think we tended to be kind of stuck in our own ways a little more. So I think in a lot of ways, millennials are better than us. So And they eat healthier. They look, they're better looking. Uh, they, they dress better. So, you know, I, I think we're in pretty good hands there. The only thing is, uh, I think millennials don't think for themselves as much. We were... Uh, well, and millennials are more open-minded. I think they also, they, they, they believe everything they hear a little too much. That'd be my only critique is maybe look at all five sides of an issue. We were taught to be skeptical and not trusting, I guess, because we grew up in the Cold War. I think millennials are a little more trusting or maybe too trusting. You know, not that, that you know, trusting a good quality or not is debatable, but we were taught to be skeptical and, and 
of everything and look at five sides of every story. So that'd be my only recommendation. Try to not believe everything you hear in the news or from one side or another because, you know, everything's political, right? Everybody's got their own little agenda. So try to keep an open mind, look at everything. So, but anyway, that's it. I think millennials are pretty cool people overall. I, I think we're, I think the country's not as bad as everybody tries to make it out to be. I think a lot of that's just hype. But generations, right? Every generation blames one before, right? So, hope you catch that song and uh, see you for the next video. Bye.